In the second vote, we wanted to debrief a little bit around um, the survey information and what it meant, and then maybe talk a little bit about maybe some some communication strategies. What can we do from this point to try to, to get to yes um, with the budget? I think that's that was kind of the main purpose, I think. Um, and so I had, you know, I mean, I had, you know, I had prepared something just kind of generally around, you know, do we need a reset button around communications? And it, and it seems like, I guess one of my observations is just how can we go from sort of, I mean, I think we've had just kind of, you know, trying to guilt people into voting yes versus how do we partner with folks to get to yes? So I don't know if we want to rechange our messaging. How do we, how do we, how do we try to change the message that we're getting so the people that are voting no or who have voted no might vote yes? So I don't know if anybody has any ideas, but that was sort of a conversation. I think. You're kind of frowning, so I don't know. If I, 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 I just, no, I'm just, just listening. Um, you know, and I think, and I think, and I, there were three. I went through the. Um, I don't know if people have seen the responses to the 700 survey questions or whatever. I mean, it's pretty detailed. A lot of good information in there. And I had just, I had pulled three that I think kind of, um, maybe I could just go All right. Um, you know, the first kind of speaks to my first point. This is just that these are just abstract, but it was kind of someone, you know, said, you know, why we get rid of some of the paving budget from our voting on the school budget. That, but the more important part was really the second part of this. And by the way, you need to remember just because people who disagree with you about the numbers doesn't mean they are wrong or uneducated or underformed. And this particular person, their degrees, you know, they have advanced degrees. So I think that's, you know, I think we want to at least listen to that. Some people are feeling like that they're not being heard, that if they disagree with where we are, that somehow they're not they're not, you know, of value. So I think I picked up on that. I don't know if others picked <coughs> up on that. The second one was um, there's, you know, some obvious, you know, tensions with a smart taxes group and concerned taxpayers group. And again, it really gets to this, how do we get to a place where we can better understand each other's point of view <coughs> and how can we set up a process by which those other views um, are kind of valued in our community and we can kind of come to some middle ground. So those are some themes I picked up, and the third one was really just about a teacher that was really talking about, um, you know, the increases are, are top taxes have doubled in eight years. Um, you know, some questions about the, the ratio of students, and, and but those are kind of common themes. So I think if there's some way that we can, in the messaging that we go forward, talk about how can we kind of hear some of the messages and maybe um, change how we communicate. So one thought is if we could say, you know, I think where we are in, in at least going through in some of the survey questions, um, people who are really, I'm not sure 3% is acceptable anymore. I, they're, they're kind of saying, I'm not sure what the right number is. But can we change the messaging to something like, we hear you, you know, we will work with you, give us, we're not going to, we're not going to change the ship overnight. We need some time to maybe think about a different budget process going forward for next year. So that, that was sort of the, the, the first point about do we reset what we talk about? Um, and so I, I kind of throw that out to everybody and anybody have any thoughts or comments or? I'll go. I am, um, I read season two and I thought there were nuggets of information that we absolutely could use going forward. And I I felt like there was a good balance of people who had students in the school system and, and those that didn't. And so it sort of gave a nice view of the whole spectrum. But I, I worry about focusing so much on <coughs> 700 results. Um, I think it's good information and it can guide us, but I don't know that it is, is the data I want to use to totally change our communication or our strategy or how we talk about it because I feel like we have a good budget. We have a solid, well thought out budget that I stand behind 100% and I think saying that and voicing that is important and I think it helps the community see people stepping up and saying, you know what, 
this is the right budget to move our, our school district ever so slightly in the right direction. It's not, it's not crazy. It's not overwhelming with um, fluff, which I, I've read and just want to like roll my eyes. But it, it, it's a good budget and it should be supported because it's a good budget. I don't feel like I need, if people aren't going to vote for it because they change their um, desire on what they want for a tax increase, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change their mind. I, I have enough self-awareness to know that that's not going to happen by me saying something, but I think, I think supporting the budget and, and saying it vocally is important. It, we've worked hard on this budget and it deserves to be supported, in my opinion. So I don't know, I don't know just focusing on, I mean, I understand why we're focusing on these <coughs> sort of negative ones that people said no, I, I get that. But there were also ones that said, you're not investing enough. Mm -hmm. I wish you, I wish there, were, there was more in here. There's nothing in here. It's just mm -hmm. basic services and I want to see more. So. There's that side too. So balancing is sort of a two-way street for me. Like I feel like we've, we've come down and it would just keep chasing a moving target, I feel like. And that's the frustrating part on my end. So I, I tend to look at it not so much as the uh, as detail oriented as we need to be. Of course, um, I, I'm 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 more frustrated not that we're I'm more frustrated that we're looking at pennies. We're pension pennies, and we're we're really losing track of the bigger picture of why we started this process collaboratively in the first place. And I'm I'm really concerned that we. You know, I, I was I was very sincere when I said this is really the test for us to decide if this process is going to work well moving forward. We, you know, I don't I don't agree, I don't think we'll ever get it 100% for everybody. I, I know we won't. Um, it's an impossible uh, goal to have. Um, but I, I put a lot of faith and a lot of energy and commitment and trust into the process that we're developing, and we are still developing it. Right. And and while I do feel that you know we. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, we constantly struggle with the best way to share information, and we're, you know, that's been a common theme since I've probably st since I've started for sure, and I'm sure it's been a common theme throughout the town. Um, I, I think we've made great steps in how we communicate. I think we, I'm kind of to Jody's point. I'm always very, very cautious about what we base our policy decisions on, not just our, uh, you know, it's, it, this is good feedback, it's good information to have, but, I mean, I could come up with three different examples. Oh, no, that no, no, no. It, 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 yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, it, so I, and I'm not cr challenging or criticizing what you put out there, I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's very easy for us all to kind of pick and choose what we want to support our individual arguments. So I guess I, I would want us to really, um, you know, if we're going to, if, if there's one common ground maybe we could all agree on and that's this process should continue the way it's continuing. Um, and, and I'm not saying hard and fast that it, you know, we can't make improvements and find a way to, to bring maybe other people into the mix, but you know, um, I, I, I think that, that if you, and we're elected for a reason, okay, and we are representing a group of people. Um, and, and you know, if we, if we constantly open the process up to a referendum or a survey or a vote, um, I, I'm saying those are good ways to kind of get a feel, but ultimately we've got to make those decisions and we have to make those decisions based on what we feel collectively is in the best interest long term of the, of the town, not just getting it to the next budget. That's important, but you know, I'm, I'm very hesitant to sacrifice the bigger picture and the bigger goal just so we can get through a vote. And, and I think, you know, if, if anything, I think we, those are the kind of themes we should be, we should be building upon, the commonality, the communication, the cooperation, the collaboration. And we tend to get really bogged down with some of these negative issues, especially when it gets heated. And, and I think we've got to try and rise above that and say, okay, yes, it's not a perfect system. We understand that. It's not a perfect budget. It's not, nobody's really getting everything that they wanted. But is it really ultimately in the best interest of the town? 
I personally think so, and that's why I supported it, and that's why I'll continue to support it. So, you know, I think the struggle for me is finding that balance between, you know, who's, it's not necessarily always who's speaking the loudest. It's really taking that balance of the information that we're getting in, and how do we do what's, to quote Judy Roy, which I'm sure you're going to roll your eyes at this one, but we do the best we can for the most people with the least resources that we can. Does it make sense for this group to check back in on that fundamental question that Chris has put out there, which is this collaborative approach, is it preferred? Is it still the direction you want to go? Absolutely. You know, part of what we undertook three years ago when we started this process is that, you know, it's a process, in my head, it's a process change map. So we started the process and we've gone through a couple of iterations, and one of the things that we've never really done is a post-mortem evaluation of the process itself, other than slapping each other on the back saying, wow, we did better this year than we did last year. And we always have done better this year than we did last year. So what I think that we need to do is actually go through that post-mortem process and try to identify if anything broke, where did it break, and how we can change that. Personally, I don't think anything broke. I agree with Jody and with Chris. Nothing broke in that process. People disagreed with our ideology about where we want to take the town, and that's something you can't change in a process map or in a conversation. We fundamentally, I fundamentally disagree with the people that turned down the vote in the referendum. The only way to change that is that election. But I think, too, I think it's important to hear that there are those that feel strongly one way against the budget or against the spending or whatever it is that they feel, and that there are people on the other end who are going to say yes every time. Because there's part of me that thinks some of it is habit, almost. Like, for years, people have said, oh, it's too top-heavy. That seems to be one of the things that keeps coming up. Well, our administrative costs are the lowest in Cumberland County per people. Like, really low compared to other towns. So that sort of seems to be just like the thing that has been said for years and years, so it just keeps getting said. Or, oh, the spending is out of control. Well, this year our expenditure increase is 2.89%. at this point. It's the lowest it's been in years. But that's always what's been said. So it's still just being said because it's sort of a habit. So that's this end. Then there's this end over here that's always going to say, yes, you're not spending enough. We want more. We want foreign language. We want all of this other stuff. So it's this chunky middle that I feel like needs the information and needs to be heard. And, and somehow they need to be reached differently. And I don't know what that is. And I, to Tom's point, yes, I think this approach is the right approach working together and I believe wholeheartedly in the one town one budget I think to say that that's just words or whatever sort of is sad to me in that it should be one town and it should be one budget and we should be figuring out how to make this all work together but is there a way is there changes in the process that we can do that gets more people here because again we have one audience member. Like, if if we somehow make the joint meetings different, in that they're more not an event, but they're a reason to come and get your information. We're talking about <coughs> specific things. Maybe it's very specific things. Mm -hmm. So it drives people here because they're interested in it. I don't know, but I think there are changes that can be made along the way. But I think the the joint meeting is. Valuable. Yeah, and I guess sorry, Tom, yes, I mean, I think I think we've built a great process, and, and part of it is I think we've done a great job this year, in, in the last couple of years, bringing this group together. The problem is, as I see it, and I believe that we should continue, but everything is a continue. We should do the post mortem. Everything's sort of a continuous improvement process. What can we do next mm -hmm. to make it better? I think all of us don't want to be here a year from now or a couple of years from now doing this type of thing again. I think we're. But, and I think it kind of builds on what, what, what Jody just referenced. I think that the opportunity is how do we bring those that 
may may not support where we are with the budget. How do we bring them in, get their input, maybe answer, maybe they have some simple things that can be answered. I mean, so, so for instance, I've heard some simple things that has, has been a request and has been on our, our calendars. Can we do financial projections for three years? Can we do some things around? So there may be some things that we can do that gets folks to yes um, if we start earlier in the process. So I, I think it'd be great to have that postmodem, postmodem, but whatever. Um, but my bigger question today is, is how can we get to yes this year? I mean, it, it's. I mean, we've got. You know, we're only. You know, we've got one opportunity to put something in the Scarborough Leader probably before the vote. And if this vote doesn't go, um, what's sort of our process to, to regroup that? Um, I think I think those are things that we should think about because I think that's what we're. Yeah, so that's part of the intent. So so I I think um, that's a, that's that's. That's a big picture, right? I mean, we've, we've, we constantly struggle with that. And I think um, we struggle with, you know, if you've got 100% of the population, you've got 10% on each extreme, and you've got 80% in the middle. And it's the people in the middle that we're trying to engage. And typically our thought process as rational, reasonable human beings is that if I could just give you the information and the right answers that you're looking for, we can convince you that what we're doing is right. But it boils down to trust, right? Because... Um, we, and we've, we've addressed this as a council, or tried to address this as a council. We've, we, there's been so much, there's been such a lack of trust, not with individuals, but as collectively as a body, I think, for a while, that we've almost have to over-communicate the, the, the positive side of things. Because, and it, because I think that if um, people are going to vote on their emotions, and, and, and I think it doesn't, you know, you get to a point where I mean, I don't know how else we can get information. We, 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 that's why we started with that community dialogue, why we start, and we started with the, uh, the budget forum, allowing people to come in and ask questions. You know, the, the council holds open communication uh, meetings, you know, once a quarter now. We put articles in the, in the leader. We've got Facebook page. We have Twitter accounts. You know, we've got all this other stuff that we're trying to, and, and every question that gets asked, a response is put out there on the website, and it's, it's shared. So I'm not so sure if it's, if it's just for the people that are engaged now, I'm not sure it's a question of just giving them more information. I think at this mm -hmm. point, it's a question of them. They're either going to accept it to the level, they're either going to get what they want on both sides, you know, or uh, they're just not going to support it one way or the other. So I think the, I think the message and the messaging and the push needs to be for that, that middle ground, that moderate ground in the middle that says, you know, listen, yeah, I don't want my taxes to go up uh, an insane amount, but, you know, is 3% reasonable? Is 2.5% is more reasonable? Is 5% reasonable? You know, do we need to have, you know, we talked about bringing this out into the community and doing little, you know, a counselor and a, and a school board member. Ta ask us questions. Talk to us. How do we get to this? I think with people that are unengaged, and I don't want to say uninformed, but unengaged in the process, that's very helpful. But I think people who are already set in their ways, I'm a little leery about how effective that's going to be on either side, how effective it would be to... to and that's what we're really dealing with. Yeah. On both sides. We're dealing with a population that is set in their ways. Because personally, we could have been at 2.5%, Peter, and the group would have still come back and said, you need to be at 2. And there's a side on the other side that will sit there and say, if we were even at 4%, they would say, we still need more money and it needs to be at 45 um, that's the population that's really that we're dealing with in this situation that we're focusing in on. And the question is, I, I don't believe you're going to change them. What we need to change is the population that's not active and get them engaged so that they will come out and vote because it's their community. That's the population that's not responding that we need to focus in on, not the groups that are uh, participating. Mm -hmm. and, I think that, that and I think the facts are out there. I think, like to Chris's point, I don't know that facts... Mm -hmm are the way to anyone's heart at this point. It's, it's more emotion. How do we create the story of the budget and how does it impact different kids or how does... I, I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, would be... I think in the near term, we have to be really careful. Um, I don't think in the near term we can solve this and get the yes by getting more people up to vote. We have 25% voter turnout. And mm -hmm. we, I think, would be foolish not to appreciate there was a 600 vote difference. So I think in the near term, our strategy is to be 
uh, focusing on switching those to yes. It's not people that didn't vote last time that are going to vote this time yes. Right, but then you get it, I, I, and I understand where you're coming from. I just think you get into a, then it becomes the philosophical battle of what really is the right amount. And and I think that's an individual type of thing. I mean, I'm not happy going with 2.5%. Well, we're not, you know, we're not saying it. That number is right. set now. It's a matter right. of how you but communicate this sure. in the next 10 but to, days. But to Peter's point is if it doesn't get to there, what's the next step? Are we going to continue that decline? Or are we going to continue, or are we going to at some point say, you know, listen, we, you know, we've, we've got to, We've got to do. We've got to behave in what we feel is the best interest of this town. That's what we're, we're able responsibility to do that. No, no, I think there's a way to defend the position you've taken and to articulate that it was a uh, in recognition of the vote and a uh, more than a good faith effort toward responding to it. So I don't, I'm not suggesting in, at this point you're not going to change what you've done. You've done it. Right. But I think there's a way to package it a little differently than we have so far. I don't know if it would be helpful. Uh, but Julie and I have had a number of conversations and I think are generally of like mind that I, it may be helpful if we do some communication in our you know, professional capacities as opposed to the elected officials. And if we go down that road, I would, I would look to do a number of things. Is one, reaffirm the process that I just heard everyone agree to. Um, I think that's an important part of it at the outset. Uh, but to also acknowledge some of the things we've heard and make some commitments into the future. We can't solve this stuff in the next 10 days or the next two months. Right. Right. Well, that's why, that, and that's what I was getting at, and that is that, you know, we're 12 days away from the, from the full well, referendum. But we recognize that there's some value. How on earth are you going to repackage that. this issue, which is, you know, somewhat contentious, and, and that has to become positive? I, I, I don't too late. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that we haven't acknowledged. I mean, you know, going from three and a half and making a three hundred and seven thousand dollar cut to me is substantial. I mean, I think that money, money aside, strangely yeah. in saying that there's mm -hmm. some substantive, there's substance below this that mm -hmm. hasn't been given attention. It seems to me. Uh, as Peter touched on a couple of them. We've heard a reoccurring theme for years now uh, about managing long-term debt. That's something finance committee's taken up and is will continue to talk about. This committee's looking at. Multi-year forecasting. Sure, that's something we've kicked around. But but again, I still think we're back to philosophical issues because yeah. we we brought the bond we brought the bond the, the the bond council in to talk to us about long-term debt, and you know quite frankly their their argument certainly put me at ease in terms of the rationale behind where we're at and why we're at, you know, um, to make me comfortable to the point not necessarily that I think we should open the checkbook up let's say and pile it on, but I, I certainly don't think that. It's as severe an issue as some people are, are making it out there. Not, out there. But the point is, it, they're not comfortable with it. And so maybe we need to do more work to say why we're in a comfortable debt position. But we started this conversation mm -hmm. on a, about how do we repackage so we get voters to yes. Yeah, this time. Talking about long term debt isn't going to get a voter to change their vote from no to yes. You know, Shana, the thought might be if, if I suspect what I've heard, of, as I've understood some of the comments, is they want to be heard and acknowledge that they have some points. Mm -hmm. And so one thought would be in a way to kind of move forward, we are very late in the process of where we are. But is there a way that we would be open to a process to say for next year's budget cycle, we want to bring more people to the table, we want to get, we want to listen to some of your concerns and work together to kind of figure out, I mean that's a great example about, you know, our are the admin salaries different than others? If everybody was at the table and had data and information and had the conversation, um, maybe they'd be supportive of where we are. And I think, so the problem is how do we get, so my estimation is, in my humble opinion, if we were to maybe say, gee, give us, give us a year to really kind of refine this process that we've undertaken, we'll listen to your concerns, we'll invite you to the table, we'll work with you to try to address some of those current concerns. Is that a way that moves us forward? That's sort well, of the yeah, At least you acknowledge that we can't do any of that between now and the vote. But, but the I, I guess my question is, how are we not doing that now? What are we doing that's so oppressive or so restrictive that we're not listening to people? Well, if I could just add a few points. I think that um, Having been in districts where the process is not this collaborative, certainly continuing to continuing down this path for the way that we work to get to the budget, I think is extremely healthy. And I'm 
I'm really proud of the work that we've done as a joint yeah. finance committee and the way that we've worked together. I think that the next step is for us to, how do we extend that collaboration mm -hmm. and that respect to our community so mm -hmm. that we are valuing the diverse voices that we're hearing from our community and understanding that we want differing opinions in our community. That's healthy too. We don't want everybody who's like, spend more, keep, you know, increase the debt. We don't want that. We need that kind of pushback from our community to help us set boundaries and to make really good decisions. Um, and so I think that being new to the process and, you know, understanding a bit from, from things I've read and hearing um, all of your individual reflections that you've come a long way as a joint finance committee and with the town and the school working together, I think our next step is saying, how do we build trust in our community? Mm. Because I do believe, I do believe that this is a very emotional decision for many folks because money is emotional, right? Um, that's just, that, that's just a matter of fact. And so I think our big work moving forward is to address some of these concerns, to continue with a healthy process, to think about how do we simplify and get, you know, just-in-time information out to our community so that they can make an informed decision, but then honoring whatever that decision is that they make. Um, because we're, our job is to provide the information, but it's not to sway someone's opinion one way or another. Um, it's for us to hear our community and really understand like where, what is the threshold? What can our community um, support? And trying to hit the target in, in that way, which is a little bit of a different way to think about it rather than trying to get somebody who's saying no to say yes. And instead of really trying to think about where's the tipping point. And it, I, that's just like a slight nuance, but um, that's the one thing that I keep thinking about because I, d I don't believe that there's any more facts we can put out there that is going to change opinions at this point. Right. No, I, can I just you know, add one thing? Um, so I'm not on the finance committee and I never want to be on the finance committee, but one thing that I always try to say when we're talking about the budget is rather than talking about what's lost or what's not in it, is to, uh, to highlight for people what they're voting for what is in the budget, like this budget has X, Y, and Z in it. So it gives people a reason to vote for it. That it's not, you know, and it's happened before because we are in that situation where it's, you know, we're going to lose seventh grade sports if this budget doesn't pass. Not that that's this year. I'm just saying that in past that's been the case. But when seventh grade sports was back in the budget, it was really important to say this budget has seventh grade sports in it because it was a loss for a lot of a lot of people. So, not coincidentally, the budget passed the first time when seventh grade sports was put back in the budget. So when we highlight what's in it, what they're voting for, I think it's, number one, more positive, and number two, it's really concrete that this budget has these things in it, has an improvement strategy, has whatever. What is an improvement strategy? So like a two-sentence thing about improvement strategy. Just that might not be the most razzle dazzle thing in the budget, but but there's not a lot of extra. <laughs> it's so hard to think of things, but you know, highlight things that we've had for years, but might be at risk if we can't pass the budget. So it might just be an angle in the next couple of days to take. I think it's 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 also important to realize that you know I mean I mean to your point Tom of having you and Julie you know go out into the community and and put information out there I think that's valid mm -hmm. but I also think your roles are a lot different than than what ours need to be because I mean to Julie's point you you really can't you've got to be very neutral and explain the process and say here's where we're at kind of thing whereas I think you know from a political standpoint. Um, we're always kind of jockeying for what we feel is the right position and the right policy and the right way to, right direction to move that in. So I'm not saying that, that, that it's not important to do that on both fronts, but I do think that, you know, we've got to be very cognizant of, of putting, putting either of you in a position where you are, uh, at least appear to be advocating one way or another, because I, I think as soon as you uh, support one group, you're going to alienate another group. And I, you know, I, I think it's, it's, you know, well, I think that's a good to get that out there because it should be a very um, neutral and well-accepted position of the process and how it's going. Um, I, I would just be cautious of... Uh, yeah, no, of I, mean, I don't offer that lightly. In fact, yeah. I think in my tenure here, not just here, in my public service, I typically 
don't take that position because I, right. I don't want to stop my job taking position. But I wonder if our voices are viewed differently than. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure they are. Absolutely. And I think it's. And, absolutely. Absolutely. and, and the fact that we don't speak much. I, I don't know if it. Yeah, I, it, it, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that that doesn't happen. I'm just saying we just got to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, I mean, you, you know, we've heard it. I've heard it in the past, not necessarily with, with Julie, but with others. As soon as, as soon as a the school board or the school department takes starts to move in a certain direction, you know, the the red flags go up and saying, no, wait a minute, that's that's public money. You can't advocate for things using public money or using this as an example. You can't do certain things. You're restricted in how you need to do things. So I, I, I think it's a great idea. If, if you guys did the did the article, uh, you know, did an article in the leader and put out, yeah, I would certainly that, support that. that. Would have to be in. Yeah, but I think they're but talking <coughs> more face to face and discussion. But so so and that that kind of brings me to the other point is that, you know, I'm I'm you know, I, I really want us to sit down and ask ourselves, what, what have we done that's so restrictive? We, we're giving people access to this process publicly on many different levels. I'm very, very cautious about inviting one specific group or another to this table to sit down. Not because I'm elitist and not because I think that they don't, their voices don't need to be heard, but I think once you allow one group to do that, there's going to be four or five groups behind there saying, why not me? Why not? Why can't we? Why did they get special privileges? Whoever it may be. So I think we've got to be really, really cautious of how we invite organized groups into this process. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that their opinion doesn't matter, but we've got, if, if we're going to come up with a, a better way to, to, to get that kind of input, I don't think it can be in a, in, a, in a setting like this. I think it needs to be, like we said, more of a, of a, of a public setting where we invite the whole public up and let people just kind of come up and, and, and interact the way that they want to or hold a different type of session. So my concern isn't, you know, and I, I, gotta, I, know I don't want us to sound like we're, we're you know, closing the doors and doing this behind closed doors somewhere and we don't want input. I just think it's a very slippery slope when we start inviting certain groups in, whichever side they're on, and excluding other groups or not opening them up to everybody. And, and I feel like I absolutely agree. The two things I wrote down as Julie was speaking was be sure to have all present because I feel like that's already starting. There's already a bubbling of, wait a minute, it seems like the focus is sort of one-sided or why do they have a louder voice than we do? And I feel like that's already sort of bubbling. So that was one of the things I wrote down. And then the whole to the table, bring them to the table. That part makes me kind of uneasy. Like I feel like we've been elected to be leaders. And so I don't know, I'm assuming that's just a phrase that we're using, but that makes me a little nervous. That whole idea of, of saying to one group, hey, come to the table and voice your concerns and your opinion and we'll take that under advisement. That seems like we've been elected to do a job. I'm happy to have them voice their concerns and voice their opinion, but coming to the table makes it seem like they're part of a decision-making process that... Other people that aren't afforded. Other people aren't afforded and haven't been elected to do. Well, I'm just wondering if through our comprehensive planning process, mm -hmm. part of I, what I understand to be the process, part of that is getting really crystal clear about our vision for our community mm -hmm. and setting and, and then getting really clear about our values. And when we're really clear about those things, like what is, what is the type of community that we're trying to become and then what is it that we collectively commit to, whether it's a you know, predictable tax rate, whether it's, you know, investment in schools, whether it's, you know, whatever our priorities become or whatever we say our values are, then we can align our priorities to that. So when we're making decisions, it's in, it, it's in that continual alignment. And every year we're just checking back to, mm -hmm. does this take us one step closer to where we said um, we were trying to go? And also at what, at what pace? You know, so I think that that's part of it's like, 
how do we determine what our pace is or what the plan is or what the timeline is to get toward that vision, but knowing that you know, each and every year that vision should also be adjusted. But I, I think that's, I think the voters do that when they elect us as, as, as representatives. I think, and Dom, you can attest to this, I mean the makeup of the council can shift dramatically in the course of one election and everything that we do, I shouldn't say this, everything that one group or what direct, whatever direction one group at that moment decides to go in could radically change over the course of one vote. So I think I, I look to, to you guys as staff to kind of have that longer term vision of, you know, we need to get to point B over here. And, and we as elected officials have to chart the course to get there. You know, um, and I think that, um, I think part of that comprehensive process is great for us as a community. I mean, I think the biggest aspect and the biggest challenge that we have, a part of that trust factor is, and I think I've spoke with almost all of us, all of you individually about this, is, is in my opinion, a real lack of sense of community in this town and a lack of shared, of, of, of shared goals and visions. And a, and a comprehensive plan can help that, but I think we've got, we've got to find other ways to engage each other and actively promote the community as a whole and not promote our individual neighborhoods or our individual causes. And, and, and that's what I struggle with, is I don't know how to accomplish that. And we've got a lot of reasons why that hasn't happened up to this point, both ge geographically and philosophically to some extent. And, and I, I really believe that the One Town, One Budget was a kind of a first stepping stone in that direction because it does help us all kind of focus on the town as a whole. I mean, education is really one of the few issues that we can share within the entire borders that, that impacts almost everybody the same way. You know, it's different than a, than a beach cleaning or a, a you know, a, a, um, a beach patrol or something like that. Not that those things aren't important, but they're very geocentric. They're not necessarily community-wide. And, and, that's, and that's what I think we, you know, I think the longer-term goal should be trying to develop that goal with a comprehensive plan. I think can do that with our, our ultimate visions, but then collectively we've got to decide how do we move in that direction. And it's, you're, it's going to be a marathon. There's no way it's going to happen in 15 days, that's for sure. One, um, thing, one thing that I heard um, on your point about, you know, like focusing on one area of like beach cleaning is that people, while that may not impact them, they look at it like, well, if, they're, if the council's taking the time to focus on that, then they're showing an interest, and then if I need something down the road, they're gonna, I'm going to be comfortable enough to go to them to ask them for something. So I think that even though sometimes some of these issues seem small, in the grand scheme they actually could become large issues because people who are around and listening, and this is a large town but a small town feel and people talk. And if they feel like we're listening to one small issue, then when the big issues come up, their belief in us is stronger. Um, I called a couple of those people. We got hammered with emails after the last vote, I mean, and before. Um, and I took a little bit of time and called a couple of those people and just to ask them, you know, like, what, I helped me understand some of this. And, you know, like I said to Julie, I got a lot of feedback that some of this is residual um, and it's going to take time. And that while there is a, um, a very strong feeling of trust with Julie, the rest of us aren't, uh, don't have that yet. Um, Julie has come in and kind of set this precedent of really listening to everyone, no matter where they're from or what they're doing um, or what side they're on. And we didn't necessarily have that as an open door policy in the past. And so some of the feedback I got, and I was actually somewhat surprised at how open some people were, was that they trust Julie. They don't trust the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And so they need more time. And so I don't know if this year we're going to get what we necessarily want, but I think going forward, there's quite the platform that you all have created to build off of. And it seems like people are really willing to work with that as long as we keep going down this road of inclusiveness and listening and taking the time. Um, I personally think from talking to people that if Tom and Julie were to hold a couple Q&As, they would be incredibly valuable. Um, I talked to many people that didn't understand it, just didn't understand the budget at all. They didn't understand what one town, one budget meant. They were, they were confused and a lot of them were elderly 
And it wasn't because they were ignorant or they didn't want to take the time to look into it. They just didn't get it. It's a confusing process if you're not part of it. Um, and so I, I know that from our roundtable discussions, we get a, a wide variety of people from, from elderly to people that don't even have kids in the school system yet. Um, that come and ask all of these wide ranges of questions. And I think if you two were to hold um, a couple of Q&As, I bet you'd be surprised at the turnout that you would get. And I would, it would be my suggestion to not have council there and to not have school board there, mm -hmm. that it's just the two of you. I think it can be difficult, though, to convey the difference between listening and truly hearing what someone's saying. Mm -hmm. that it doesn't equal agreement. I can listen to people all day long but I might not agree with them. And when there's two opposing sides, I can listen to both sides. I can honestly hear what you're saying, but in the end, I'm going to vote one way or another. I'm going to come out one way or another on that. So listening doesn't equal agreement. And I think that gets lost sometimes, that people say all the time, you're not listening to me, you're not listening to me, we're not being heard. You're being heard, we don't agree. Right. That's that's hard. Right, but, but that's okay. Right. So, it, so not if, not if, not if, so if someone not could come and, and voice their concern, and whether we agree with them or not, there may be something there that we can build on. Someone sent me a, a video about tribe and finding a nugget. I keep saying this, and then I never send it to anyone, but I will send it to all of you. <laughs> but um, it's like finding a nugget of commonality where yeah. you can you there's something that we have that we have in common that we then become a tribe. Mm -hmm. Although we may not agree on everything, once we become a tribe, then it becomes easier to have that discussion. Right. and realize okay, find well, other things that are in, there's yeah, other I mean, things right, there's right. other little nuggets and you build on that and your tribe gets bigger and yeah. people and feel heard but they understand we may not agree and but we're in a that's different that's world we're in a totally different world where where this council was and this school board was six years ago when I first started nobody cared nobody cared nobody showed up nobody ran for office nobody did anything and now, I mean, we're, we're, we're bogged down. I mean, I mean, I know how many hours I spend a week on council material. And I'm not on finance. So I can only imagine what everyone else is doing. So I think we're in two totally different worlds from where we were. And in, a, and in six years, that's a short amount of time to have to completely change how you function as, as board. Well, and in many communities, education is that common nugget because there is a return on that investment for all of us. There's so there's tons of evidence to as to how people with higher levels of education and educational attainment actually give back to a community in a variety of ways. And for some reason, I think part of it is that it sounds like some people feel like the only way they have a voice is through their vote on the school budget. Mm -hmm. And so I can express my discontent with many other happenings of the town government mm -hmm. um, through my no vote. Mm -hmm. Or I can express my support in my, for my own children and their future through my yes vote. And so it's, it is like how do we create other opportunities for people to truly be heard and to be a part of the collective good of our community. Uh, yeah, and I can tell you uh, my opinion growing up in northern Maine, worked 10 years up in mid-coast Maine, most, almost all the rest of Maine, their schools are their rallying point. Mm -hmm. right. And it's not about necessarily the return on the investment and the financial piece. There's an emotional connection. There is such pride. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I go, think go to the Bangor Auditorium and watch the tournament. I was going to say, those, those smaller They're all gone. And yeah. Scarborough, for whatever reason, doesn't have that level of yeah. connection. I think Scarborough has, over the years, there's been a lot of change. So people who moved to this town mm -hmm. 25 years ago have watched the town become something that they didn't sign up for right. when they bought their house. Right. And now today, they're here, and they're saying to themselves, what happened? Yeah. I started here with this, and now I got this, and I don't know if I want that. And how do you get them to see, you know, the change that happened, but also the good things that happened with that change for everybody? I'm so I simplifying think and being not politically correct, but when you change from the Redskins to the Red Storm, I mean, huge. I just say that as an example. Right. That's, 
harkens back to the time where you know everyone was rallying around the football right. team. Right. 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 that happened before I arrived. No. I was on the school board when that happened. I think that's, an opportunity. I think no, that's an opportunity for us, mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe that's where this group goes once we get a budget that passes and we don't have to talk about this anymore, we can like focus on those things. Like, are there ways, and we've all so talked about some of them, like, are there ways the to bring the different yeah. So let me, let, let me ask, Sorry, let, let, me, let me plant this up, because, you know, finance typically carries a lot of load around uh, every year with budgets and everything. <coughs> Do we want to form a different joint committee and call it a cultural affairs or something or call it a different group and have different people maybe we call it joint communications or something yeah. town culture and climate whatever you know and we and we we, we 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 don't have to just collaborate on the finance level I mean that's obviously very critical but do we want to move idea. forward and yeah, so. with another group well why don't you have the core of that group be made up of parts of both of your groups and then invite others into it I mean it doesn't need to be limited to you spread it Chris, you've earned your keep for the <laughs> I, I, I am not a smart man. Give, give, give him a chance. He'll step back with someone. Yeah, we're going to volunteer for that. Yes, yes. So so the, the, the next 10 minutes. One of, the, one of the things that I, I've listened to everybody talking about, and one of the things I struggle with in the communication pieces, there's so much one-off. There's so many one-on-one -on -one conversations that I have, that Julia has, that Tom has. Everyone at this table is having conversations, and in them, people are bringing up some of these things that you're seeing here, like you know, the, the questions Peter brought up. Well, you know, the tax increase or positions in school administration instead of in the classroom. And I have conversations with people and we go through their questions and their concerns and more times than not, we walk away with a better understanding of one another and they walk away feeling somewhat comforted that they get more what's going on to case point mm -hmm. in the budget. But you can't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with everybody in the town of Garborough. Right. If you could, we wouldn't have to sit here and have this. So it's kind of well, back back to your elected representative, so but they're making the right decision. Right. And how do you, short of going door to door to all those 20,000 people and having those conversations, how do you build that trust? Is there a more efficient way to do that? You know? Well, and everybody has that one question. That's the, their most important question. Right. It goes back to my point of I love the idea of the one pager, but everybody's one pager has different has information different things on it. On it. Yeah. And um, and I think that you know Tom and I, in preparing our initial presentation, tried to figure out like what is the key information? How do we help people understand the big picture? Um, but then also create the backup information that allows people to go really deep if that's their preference. And so we really are trying to differentiate based on the different needs of each community member. But the amount of time that is spent, you know, chasing after one data point is, is highly inefficient. And it really, I'll just speak from my own experience this year, takes away from so much more of the work that I should be devoting time and attention to. It takes a lot of energy too. Even if it's a short period of time, it's so much energy. Well, here and I think there's got to be a good way to filter that through. I mean, if 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 I, I mean, I would imagine with the emails that we get, you know, the the superintendent and town manager get just as many. And if they're spending all their time responding to emails, how are they managing the the town and the schools if they're constantly answering emails? That's the world we live in now. No, it's well, it's uh, the immediate. Right, and but reaction is what's expected. Right, and but the question is, how do we, you know, how do how do we help help get through that process? So, I mean, I think in the next, ten, you know, for the next couple minutes, I I I'm in favor of of having uh, Tom and Julie do a Q and A if they're open to it, mm -hmm. and they can find time to do it. And I I definitely would propose. I mean, we could, you know, I I wouldn't mind going and listening. Um, but I certainly, I would agree that I don't think there should be counselors or board members at the table. And I guess I'm, I, I want to question the q and A. I, I'm okay. not sure if that's the most effective way to get the word out in the near term. Um, I'm not so confident that we have mm -hmm. lots of people there to begin with. Just to right, sounds well, kind of dry. Well, hey. well, <laughs> no, and it would be driven by the questions from the from those that show up. I mean, not sure. Right. Not necessarily different than the forum. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, yeah. isn't that exactly yeah. it, it is. the forum? <laughs> right. so if we want to look at long range about how to change. Maybe what we do is change that forum process so there's fewer town counselors at the podium. I mean, but keep in mind, even though the manager and the finance directors are at the podium, 
Um, most of the staff is there as well. The chiefs are there on the, on the town side. The public works is there. The teachers, the principals, uh, the administrators are there uh, to be that knowledge base. And you know, we've kind of had this up and down. You know, the first year we had 100. Second year, I think we had less than 20. Last year we had, I think, 30 or 40. You know, so, so, so maybe we can change that process and right. do more of them. But what do we do? What do we do between now and the next right. 15 days? I, I, there's an opportunity for a leader. Yeah, that's spot. Uh, there's certainly Facebook. We can. You don't really have 15 days. We've got a town mm-hmm. newsletter that I can I can use as well. Yeah, seven. Eight, what? Two eight, eight business days. No. Seven, eight business. Q&A does sound a little too formal and a little too like, oh, God, I don't have to go and ask my question and have them answer it, blah, blah, blah. But the round table that the town council has done. No, sorry. I just had the light bulb just went on. I heard it. People, <laughs> yeah. 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 25 people, yeah. Round, yeah. maybe round table is the word. I don't know. Maybe it's less meet and greet with or meet and greet it's less like oh god I have to go prepared with a question because it's a Q&A and I'm going to be put on the spot like a round table feels like hey we're all just sitting around if I get the nerve up to ask it I will if I don't I'm good but what sort of reach I mean well, we, that's my point we've got to get maximum reach in the, ne- in the near term yeah. can we can we do we have the capability you're going to chuckle when you hear me say this do we have the capability of doing a call-in a live televised yeah. call-in yeah. I've done it before. We talked about doing P, like PSAs. Um, he's the the feedback that we got from Tom. You can obviously clearly correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, but the feedback that <coughs> we got from the video guys is that um, obviously the best time for them to do it is Thursdays, um, and that they can do taped ones far easier, but it's right. possible to do call-ins. My only concern with that, because we talked about it, is um, your time constraints and getting enough people to make those calls. Because if you don't get enough calls, you're sitting there looking like, what if it's a combination of calls and like a Facebook chat or yeah. something like that at the same time? People could, so you could have questions coming from multiple. Yeah. And you could, we could have a moderator, you know, so that, or someone screening the calls or do it, not screening, but you know, receiving them and putting them in. In the near term, I'm just concerned that the reach isn't going to be far enough to, yeah. to do yeah. that. But, it's, but with something that we actually have outlined in communications to do that, yeah. so you're, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head because people are asking for that. Well, and I think if they can stay home and they don't have to take the time to come in, certainly the elderly And they can rewatch it. And they can well, rewatch I'm, it. I'm going to put thoughts together, so I, I certainly don't want to say anything or you know, pack any messages that doesn't resonate. Um, but I am willing to put it under my signature, so it might give some comfort and sure. cover for you. So I'll share it around and get some feedback. The only other thing I would say is that the feedback that we've gotten from communications is there still are a large group of people that want mailers. It was very surprising to me, but that still are, are asking for stuff to come to their mailbox. I always throw it away, but there is a large group of people that get their information from Scarborough Leader and what comes in their mailbox. So, so we've talked about doing a mailer, and I've priced it out. I think it would cost us a, between three and four thousand dollars to do that. Um, uh, no, I know there's no money there for that. It's not the grandparents program. You don't have to. You can do you can do postcards. I can get you calling better for you through the post office. Well, that's the real question: is what do you put in the post office? You can do political campaigns for a lot less than that. Doing mailers to the entire, you can do contract to the post office, and they'll do a, 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 a postcard type uh-huh. thing, and they'll do it for very inexpensive. So one suggestion that was given to me by one of our um, community members was more of like a brochure, because those kinds of things I get, I look at it, I throw it out. But if it's like a brochure, I would, I would pull that off the shelf and read it. More That's money. Okay. Now you're talking. Now you're t- if you got any kind of trifold or sizable thing that you know, money and time. Again, yeah, money and time. I, I think right. that that might right. be a good idea for next. Next, yeah. round. next yeah. round. But if Tom, you said that you're going to, you're able to do something in the newsletter, and then you could also put one this. that goes out tomorrow morning. Okay. I mean, I can hold it a bit. And I can, I have something drafted that I can share in the leader. The other good thing too is we got probably 280 some odd names for the newsletter. 
So mm -hmm. all of do those people that came and voted that gave us their name do we still will have get those? the new. I, I re-entered them. You did come. Yeah. Yep, they're all in. Um, oh, we'll get this new version of the newsletter. So uh, everyone that came and voted that day that gave us their email addresses will get that newsletter. So, so what are you good. putting in the newsletter? Just the update? Or are you advertising a, a Julie and no, Tom No, it would be a message from show. It, would be, it would be a message. Okay. Because I didn't know if we could use those addresses to promote something that you're doing. Like, we, this, we have email addresses sounds like you guys, like people have signed up to get information from us. We have those email addresses. Mm -hmm. People have signed up from you guys to get information. Like, is there <coughs> a way to send those people an invite to a round table? I think it's going to be a print piece, either the leader and or the newsletter and Facebook, any means yeah. we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let Julie and I collaborate, okay. whether it ends up being a joint a piece under our joint signatures or two different pieces mm -hmm. and different messages. Okay. We are doing a round table the day after the election. We're hoping that it's going to be a round table discussing next year. How do we move forward? What would you like to see? How can we better serve you? It may not be in that direction. We may be having a different discussion, but we're hopeful that that's what it's going to be. So just so everybody knows. The one point we didn't discuss was the updated information from the state. And so just Oh, um, oh, yeah. Just a quick comment for our public, those who are here and those who are watching at home. We do now have the enacted numbers from the state, and we are um, our state subsidy actually does not increase in terms of the bottom line, but we did receive additional funding from the state. The, the, the challenge was that we were already well below the minimum receiver threshold, so even though we received additional state subsidy, it's still, we were still below the minimum receiver threshold, um, so our actual bottom line does not increase at all. But I, it's just, it's a, a complicated thing to message because I want, to, I want people to understand that, well, we did receive additional dollars allocated to us, it still didn't meet that minimum receiver threshold. Uh, and so, I don't know if that clarifies it for anyone at all. It doesn't change our bottom line, but um, it is looking more hopeful for FY19 based on the second year of the biennium budget. So um, we do have that to look for. I appreciate that update, but I will believe it when I see the check arrive. I'm glad to wait until the end to tell us. So the money's there. It's whether they change. Oh, never. I'm just Well, I don't get it. I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Are you to adjourn? Oh, are you guys at the meeting right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm.